Here's how Sonos is taking its audio to the next level. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I have two new speakers that I'm gonna go more in depth on today. It is the Sonos Era 100, basically a updated version, uh, very similar to the Sonos One. And then we have this guy here, this funky looking fella is the Sonos Era 300, which incorporates spatial audio for the very first time in a standalone Sonos speaker. Let's go ahead into more detail and how this stacks up against Apple's HomePod. I'm gonna be talking about both of these speakers in this video today, but I will also be doing a dedicated comparison, comparing the Era 100 to the HomePod Mini and comparing the Sonos Era 300 to the full-size HomePod. So look out for that in a separate video. Here, I'll keep it a little bit more on the high level. Let's go ahead and dive in to more details on the new Sonos speakers. Let's start with some commonalities of the Sonos Era 100 and Sonos Era 300. For starters, each doesn't have the same buttons along the back. On the top, you'll find a Bluetooth toggle switch. This is very useful. If you ever wanna switch from just the basic Wi-Fi modes to Bluetooth, you just press that single button. It's very easy to do, and it's great if you have guests over to your house, they're not on your network, and they wanna be able to just stream something quickly to the speakers. Or you can even take them with you, plug them in somewhere, and switch them over to Bluetooth mode. So very handy to have that button right there at the top of the back. We also have a kill switch for the microphone. This will physically disconnect the power from the onboard microphones, so they won't work at all. Right now, these speakers have ditched Google Assistant and they support Amazon's Assistant and its own Sonos Assistant. You won't find Siri here anytime soon though. Sonos actually testified before Congress, criticizing a bunch of the big tech players, and they had a lot of issue with Apple requiring a HomePod to use Siri on other smart devices. Because of that, I really don't think Siri will ever come to Sonos, at least unless Apple makes some big changes. Finally on the bottom is a USB-C port. This USB-C port can be used for line in audio. You do need to provide a USB-C line in audio adapter though. I'm a little bit torn on this. There is a good theory that these should just be included in the box. Why should you have to buy an additional dongle to plug in audio to your speaker? But at the same time, this feature is probably fairly niche. There's not a ton of people who want to plug in speakers into their wireless speakers. So I understand that the market exists for that, but it's probably a small subset of the overall Sonos owners. So I get that they don't want to include it in the box because it's just going to generate a lot of e-waste and added costs for Sonos. It makes sense just to offer this as a low cost add-on if you do need to add line-in audio to your Sonos speakers. Both speakers feature a revamped set of controls right there on the top. Of course, you still have capacitive buttons the same as we had before, but now they're easier to use. So you, now you have your play pause button up front and center, you have your track back and track forward buttons that you can use to adjust the playback of your audio, but now we have this new volume slider. It's super easy to use. Just place your finger and drag left or right to adjust the volume. What's better is you don't even have to look at the speaker. You can just reach over blindly, feel where that groove is, and then adjust the volume without having to look at the speaker itself. Super awesome, I love that. And there is a little status icon at the top for your, your voice assistant if you are conversing with that. Otherwise, these speakers have some differences. So let's go ahead into more detail on the Aero 100. Sonos has ditched the ethernet port on these as well as the sync button that you saw before. So neither of those will be found on the Aero 100. Sonos has changed the design a little bit, but not too much. It's about an inch taller than the Sonos One and it's more of a cylinder versus that rounded off square that the Sonos One had. Otherwise, it looks really similar. You just have a large grill around the whole thing, the Sonos logo on the front, and your capacitive controls there on the top. Between the Sonos One and the Sonos Air 100, the Sonos Air 100 definitely sounds better. It's definitely an improved speaker overall. I think just better sounding audio quality, a little bit fuller, richer sound, and improved bass. But honestly, not a huge difference. Between the two, there's not a, a big reason for me to like upgrade from the One to the Sonos Air 100, uh, but it is a nice overall speaker to have comparatively. I think what's much more exciting is the Air 300. The Era 300 is like an updated version of the Sonos 5, or Sonos Play 5, but the Play 5 is staying in the lineup, at least for now. This is also just a little bit cheaper than the Play 5, but I honestly prefer this in almost every regard. There are six drivers located inside of the Sonos Era 300. There's a front-facing tweeter that has a custom waveguide to really make that sound come out broad and cover a large area. There's dual subwoofers that each pump out each side, so one on each side 
of the Eris 300. There's a tweeter dedicated on each the left and the right side, again providing that full audio. Then there is an upward facing tweeter, which is what's going to provide the overhead channel for spatial audio. So again, front facing, dual woofers, dual tweeters, and then an upward facing tweeter for a total of six drivers inside of the Era 300. You have a few different options for listening to spatial audio on the Era 300. If you have two of these, you can connect them to your Sonos Arc or Sonos Beam second generation and use these as rear and Atmos firing speakers. So you're watching TV, movies, you have Dolby Atmos in that setup with this. Alternatively, you can use the Sonos app to stream through Amazon Music Unlimited or Apple Music, at least Apple Music starting on March 28th. When playing spatial audio through the Sonos app, it will be labeled as Dolby Atmos, so you know when you're listening to Dolby Atmos music. Now, I will say that when listening to Amazon Music Unlimited and streaming Dolby Atmos music, the overhead channel was not super prominent. That's my, that was my biggest takeaway, was that it sounded like a very large soundstage, it sounded like it filled the room very well, especially as a standalone speaker, but I didn't get a dedicated upward firing channel. That overhead channel was, was not very specific or pinpoint on. I didn't hear anything that was like coming directly from above me or behind me like I would expect with a Dolby Atmos setup. Now I will say it's probably a much better experience when watching movies and TV, but I only had one of these, so I couldn't try it with my ARC or Beam second generation. So I don't know how it sounds when watching TV, but I think that for me will be the bigger selling point. And even though there isn't much of that overhead channel when listening to it as a solo speaker in Dolby Atmos music, that isn't necessarily a bad thing by any means because the sound stage just sounded so large and broad. It just really filled the room. And that was my biggest takeaway when compared to HomePod as well. The HomePod sounded really like a singular device, whereas the Era 300 just was more expansive. And even the bass on the Era 300 was better. There are two subs inside of the Era 300 that are probably the same size as the single one inside of the HomePod. So there was more bass, more oomph, and more pinpoint, pinpoint precision on the Era 300 compared to the Apple HomePod. Sonos has a lot of smart home features baked into its speakers, aside from the voice assistants. On Apple, you can of course use HomeKit, so you can build this into scenes and automations, like playing a workout playlist when you go to begin a workout, pausing the music when you leave the house, so you don't have to manually do it, or you can create audio into scenes and routines. For instance, when I go to put the baby down, maybe it'll automatically turn the volume down to a preset level inside the living room, so it doesn't make a bunch of noise and wake the baby up. You can also use AirPlay 2 for multi-room audio if you're using other speakers besides Sonos. So if you have some HomePods around and some Sonos speakers and other AirPlay 2 speakers, you can use AirPlay 2 to cast to multiple audio points at the same time. Or you can stick with a Sonos app where you can still set things like alarms to play music to, or you can group them together and combine them with the Sonos devices for things like the rear channels on your Sonos soundbars. The new Sonos speakers are incredible. Sonos has done an exceptional job with both of these. While the Aero 100 isn't super exciting, the Aero 300 is a fantastic speaker. I love its expansive soundstage and spatial audio features. I think it's a bit expensive and ridiculous if you have a Beam second generation that'll run you like five or $600 and then you try to pair two of these as rear channels, that ends up being a super expensive for rear channels. They're gonna be almost twice as much as your sound bar alone is and you still don't have a dedicated sub yet. At that point, it just, it's a really hard math equation to make that worth it. But then again, it does add Dolby Atmos to a sound bar that didn't have Dolby Atmos, which is a pretty incredible upgrade on its own. But either way, let me know what you guys think. Do you think these things are worth it? If you'd like to grab them, there are links down below in the description. Do you think Sonos has done enough to topple the HomePod? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next video.